Welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast, Caitlin. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Oh, we are thrilled to have you, and uh, we're really thrilled to learn more about your character, Addison. But uh, first, can you tell the listeners a little bit about you, about your background, and the road that brought you to Quantum Leap? I was doing some research on you, and you're like the real-life Al. There's military intelligence, there's active duty military, there's law school, there's acting, there's horses, there's combat training. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff. Did right. I mention bartending? Yeah, just some bartending. Uh, <laughs> um, I apparently have been training for this role my entire existence. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I took the really regular, I think, path to acting, which was um, Army Law School, Quantum Leap. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> trajectory. Uh, I mean, I've just been so lucky. I joined the military at 18 years old. I was still in high school. Um, and I spent seven years in, I deployed a few times, uh, three times. Um, I got my degree while I was in, I had a spectacular experience. I was very lucky. Um, I got to work at NSA and on some really cool missions with some really amazing people. Uh, it was not something I was going to do forever. That had always you know, been something I knew. Um, I had been an actor when I was in school and uh, came from a very musical theatery family. Um, and it was a mix. Like my dad was in Vietnam. So we had that aspect. And then we had the it was a, to me, it all made sense. It wasn't weird to do any of those things. Um, and then so after uh, when I was getting out of the army, I decided to, to go to law school because that seemed like, you know, the adult thing to do with someone's life. Um, and so I went to New York. Uh, my sister lived there. She was uh, producing commercials at the time. She used to be in a band. Like, she's just so cool. She's an oyster farm now. Um, and, you know, with in New York, where it's so accessible, I was like, oh, well, I could, you know, do explore these more creative things about myself because I'm here. I'm in New York. Like, I didn't go to D.C. I didn't go to the pipeline just back to the agencies. And so I started moonlighting and some some theater classes and some writing classes, and it just sucked me in. It just really got me. Uh, so I ended up going to the Adler Conservatory um, and have been kind of grinding ever since. And then I just became the luckiest person on the planet to land this job. <laughs> Yeah. So tell us, how how did you land the job? I understand uh, when we were speaking to Deborah um, early on, just as all the casting was announced, she was uber impressed by you. And uh, she said that you had uh, won some kind of huge contest. And oh. that's how they that's how they got to you. I could be getting that wrong, but. I think she was talking about the ABC discovers Disney discovers talent search. So after theater school, um, a wonderful woman named Marcy Phillips, who I swear I will buy a house for if I can ever afford it is she's just the, she has a book. She's a casting director at ABC has been there forever. She's just, she's made a career out of finding new faces. That's been her whole career. And she uh, saw me in a class that she was doing for free actually during the pandemic. Cause she was just trying to give back and give actors something to do. And I, I'd taken her class and from that moment, I didn't know this, but she had essentially pre-selected me for the Disney discovers showcase. Um, and so I went through that process and I think, I mean, upwards of 40,000 people competed for those slots and 14 wow. got in each coast. Um, and that, I mean, that's a huge career launcher. Every, people from like Chadwick Boseman to Lupita Nyong'o, like uh, so many people have been through that showcase, uh, Pedro Pascal. And it just, it's been a, a, a jumping off point for wonderful people and the actors and that were wonderful. Uh, so we got like a year of kind of training and, and we did the showcase online. It was the first year they'd ever done it online. So it was very glamorous. They sent me a um, GoPro and I, I shot it in the basement of my mother's house <laughs> set up on a trash can. Uh, <laughs> acting is very glamorous. <laughs> and, um, and then from there, she helped me get my manager and, and, and that's the manager that fought me into the room for quantum leap. It, it, and I knew she did too, because uh, I have two managers, a, a guy and a girl. And and normally I get an email from their assistant, you know, if I have an audition. But this one I got from Avi herself at like 1130 at night. And I was like, oh, you you made a, fo a phone call for this one. <laughs> and I got, I got the audition. And, and I just remember reading it 
first of all, I meet, I flew through the pilot script. I had only meant to read a little bit just to see it. And I just loved it. And I saw the role and I saw the background for the role. And I was like, I am, I think really good for this role. And my second immediate thought was like, there's no way they're going to hire me for this. <laughs> <laughs> they're never going to hire me for this job. <laughs> And they did. I, I did. It was the whole audition process, right? It, from callbacks to, to tests. And it, my last stop was Ray. Um, I did a chemistry test with Ray, I think, I think against somebody else. And, and I just got real lucky. <laughs> just if you can go into that process just a little bit, because I'm a little bit curious. I know we've had some changes behind the scenes. I'm assuming that the pilot script that you read was the original pilot, the earthquake pilot. Correct. Yes. And when you're on something that is, I guess these days, everything is sort of wrapped in NDAs and sort of mysteries. And because it's such a spoiler sensitive environment, I'm surprised they gave you the whole script. Were, were you only privy to get a few scenes and then once they wanted to move forward, they gave you more or, or how did that work? Oh, they did the whole, they, they attached the script to that. And I'm so glad they did because it would have been nigh impossible to, uh, to do those scenes correctly without the context of what was going on. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, how on earth would I have possibly guessed what was happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, they did. And I'm, I'm really glad they did. It was incredibly helpful. If you can go into that a little bit more. So you guys had done a complete pilot episode yeah. that um, Deborah told us about. You had done a, a, a cut, a director's cut, a producer's cut, then you'd sent it off to the network and everybody seemed happy with it. And then weeks later, we hear that um, they decided to switch it up and make a new pilot episode, which is uh, the one that just aired. Um, can you tell us uh, what, what that was like? Did you guys have to turn that one around quicker? Was there a lot more that you had to take from these, what is now going to be episode six, ostensibly, I suppose, yes. and sort of rework it into, into the new pilot? Well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm glad they did this. Having done both pilots, I think the world is just introduced a bit better in this in this. Not that the pilot failed to do it. They just had a different way they wanted to to open the show. Um, and, and as you've seen it, they really wanted, cause in the first pilot, there wasn't the engagement scene where you got to see the family before the fissure. And I think that's really important to see what we were before Ben does what he does and um, kind of rips us apart. And we all have to kind of grapple with that in our own ways. Um, so that's really like what they changed along, you know, some other small stuff, but um, like the process of doing it again was honestly kind of nice. Cause we had had, instead of knowing each other for two days before filming an episode, we had known each other and had been texting and had been, you know, on these fun group chats for months at that point, we had gone through waiting for a show to get approved, which is a, it's a bonding experience. <laughs> it is. We are all praying. Um, so uh, you know, the second time we went at it, we had all of these like lived in relationships that I think you saw more, you know, we weren't trying to find them quite as much. You started to see like Mason and I have a banter that's just so fun and we just adore each other in real life. You know, there's just things and, and Jen is just the warmest person, Nanrissa. Um, so there's just these really cool things that we found through time, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and yeah, we, they rolled in the new pilot production into the, like, so we just, we just started. They, they took a couple production days from episode six, which is the pilot now that we have obviously have to get, cause a lot of the crap I said was world explaining, which is yeah, now yeah. Yeah, way too late. <laughs> so um, a lot of me has changed. All of HQ has changed because, you know, it's, we're in the, we're in the thick of it now. Um but the the leap itself, the the earthquake, the like that's all there. We get I get to work with Jewel again, who is our first co-star. They're flying her in, which I'm so excited. I mean, she's a, I mean, she's a sci-fi legend too, with everything she's done in her life. So it's just I mean, I've seen it as nothing but the most exciting thing that we just have this opportunity. Um and and yeah, we did steal a couple of days. So the ep we shot the original pilot in 
I want to say 14 days. We shot the second pilot in 12. And then all the rest of our productions are eight day schedules. Okay. I'm curious with this, the opportunity to approach Addison's introduction again, did you, did you take a different pass at the way you were approaching the character? Um, I don't think so much because I still, I still kind of believed, especially in the first one and you guys saw the pilot or the new pilot. Um, there is an element of what just happened. Like when a, when a bone breaks and like the pain almost hasn't set in yet, like what just happened? I, you know, I'm, I'm still grappling with that through much of it. Um, and, and so other than like what's wonderful about the relation and sitting in the relationships more and like leaning on them for, for, for comfort and support and love, um, which we definitely did in, in 101 much more. We had the, a wonderful opportunity, but for grappling with, cause this is the first time Addison's been in the leap just as much as Ben's been in the leap. Um, and you know, she's still like when things come at her, it's natural to think it's going to hit you. You don't realize, you know, it's not instinctually, you're not ready for it to go through you like a hologram. You, it's just, she's learning how to be in it, which I'm, I'm so excited as, as time's going to go on. Cause I know everyone to include me just is devastated over the loss of Dean Stockwell and his owl was so fun. And the Alan, um, Sam relationship was so fun. But even in the beginning, there was that time where they were still trying to figure it out. They were still trying to like, oh, what is happening? It's not safe yet. It's not, we're not, we're not at a place where we think everything's going to be okay. You know, there's, it's still very, um, you know, there's an anxiousness to it. And then as the season goes on and as, as, Ben and Addison get more comfortable with leaps, just like as Alan Sam got more comfortable with leaps. That's when you start to have all this space for fun. And, you know, there's never going to be a Dean's more an, another Dean Stockwell. He was one of the best American actors of all time. I can't be better than Dean ever was. And I can't outdo Dean being Dean. There's just, there's never going to be that. So we had to have a different relationship. And what's great is that Ben isn't exactly Sam. And and so it, we get to be something different. But what that heart of like, I'm very invested. Addison's so invested in the outcome, obviously. She loves Ben. This is her family. You know, this is her life. But, and like, these are all exciting and we have jobs to do. Um but there is an aspect of like me being able to have my little popcorn sometimes and be like, oh, this looks tough for you. You should, uh, <laughs> you should figure that out. You know? <laughs> and, and I think that's once we, once we get past these like first, you know, one or two, once we start to establish what this show is and we can settle into more of the fun of it. I think that's when, especially like, the quantum leap fans, the ones that mourn Dean as much as I do, um, will start to see that that yumminess again. Hmm. One thing that I wanted to maybe circle back on, one thing that I noticed and that we've discussed on the podcast uh, before the interview played, um, they went very quickly through um, – the, the basic premise, the setup, it seemed like um, this was a pilot that was set up for a more general audience just to reintroduce the concept without dwelling too much on the geek stuff, on the science stuff, on the leap stuff. Um, do you uh, have little moments as the series progresses over the next few episodes where you linger a little bit more on those aspects just to explain them more fully? Yeah. Yep. We had to get through them in the pilot because they really wanted – they want, like Martin just said in the TCA panel, um, they wanted this show to have a low bar of entry so that you didn't have to have watched all the seasons of Quantum Leap to enjoy this. But just like, you know, you're going to start to, we have more space and time for the relationship. We also have more space and time for like the nerd side of Quantum Leap, which I am particularly excited about. And that's so much of Ian. 
And like so much of me and Ian and Ian's working on things and I'm kind of like, can you English, you know, and then <laughs> uh, and that's fun. And yeah, so you're going to see a lot more of that. That's great. That's the stuff that the fans really want to see. And from the way you're speaking about it, um, it seems like you were a fan of the original series. How much did you know about uh, the old Quantum Leap before getting the job? Totally. I, so I, I was aware of it, but I was just a little under the age group, I think. I th um, Belisario at that point was making Jag, and that was a household watch in our I mean, of course it was. I was in the army and then I went to law school. So somebody watched that. <laughs> <laughs> somebody grew up on JAG. Um, but uh, my dad was a huge fan and he had watched it with my older siblings. Uh, I have two half siblings. Uh, so And they were uh, 10 and 13 years older. So they'd watched it. Um, so I've now gone back and, and watched. I think I'm in, I think I want to say I'm in episode three. Um, or episode three, uh, season three, um, and still working my way through. And I mean, it's like some, sometimes I have to stop because I'm like, Dean's so good. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do that. I have to do me. It's just too, he's too good there. He's too good at what he does. Um, but it's, it's, it's really for the fans. I, I think it's such a wonderful fan base and they loved it for the right reasons. So, you know, like it's a, it's, I feel like it's part of my job to work as much as I can in and, and really study Dean's work and, and honor him. And I talk to Deborah about him all the time. And Deborah, we're very sad because Deborah always says, like, I'm like, I think I would like Dean. And she goes, you would. And he would have loved you. And it just like, it's sad because, oh, I wish I had met him. Oh, I wish I had met him. But I'll do my yeah. best. I mean, I think it's great that you want to honor his legacy, but also do your own thing. And I think that's the best way to approach it because, you know, it's not trying to be the old show. It's trying to be its its own thing, but still honor the legacy of the show. And I think that's a great way to, to blend both worlds together. Thank you. Thank you. And to just e extrapolate on that a little bit, um, you had mentioned before about how great it was to be able to reshoot so that you got a sense of the family before the family was broken and what these people meant to each other. We almost joined you like in media res, like everybody knows each other. Yeah. And you guys had like um, moments where we could tell that you're all old friends. Does the show explore a little bit about um, sort of the continuation from the old project because Sam is invoked, Al is invoked. So it's very much a season six, not just yeah. a reboot. Um, do we get to see how this team came together, how you built this whole new version of Project Quantum Leap in California? Is is, is that going to be peppered in? It is. Um, but before we get to that, they're really wrestling with why Ben do it. And as stuff starts to come out about that, that's kind of like uh, what I like to call the nearest alligator. That's the thing closest. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing first. But all of that's like, you know, sprinkled mm -hmm. and we're going to get that and we'll get deeper into that. Um, we, we definitely have to get it with magic. And, and, and they already have. They already shot, you know, like a good establishment of that. We can't pretend like. It's a big surprise now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so yes, it's coming, but there's there's a lot of good stuff to get to before that, which is absolutely, like you said, um, a season a long a long awaited season six. Right. So I guess what I'm inferring from from what you're saying there is that a lot of times in in shows, especially um, you know, uh, like say Star Trek or whatever these days, the whole season seems to revolve around one central mystery. Mm -hmm. that drives the plot and the story forward. Or are you telling me that sort of the why Ben leaped is going to be only a small part of this season? It's not going, the whole season's not going to hinge on them trying to figure it out or it's going to be resolved a little sooner. That's definitely the big question. And, and, and there's, and the comp, what I'm saying is that you are going to get some of your continuations whilst we try and answer that question. And Fair enough. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> carefully so, answered uh, carefully. <laughs> thank you <laughs> doing my best 
<laughs> so um, as the observer, you get to uh, handle probably the most iconic piece of tech on the show, which is the hand link. And uh, the hand link that we saw in this premiere episode is so vastly different from the original, but it has some of the same functions. It's it's a locator primarily. It's a conduit to Sam. It's also a holographic projector. Mm -hmm. Will future episodes give that more of a spotlight? Will we be able to see a bit more of what this new handling can do? Uh, yes. Um, I don't, I think not for the first few. Uh, what am I about to shoot? Hang out for seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. And is it, no, it's uh, funny because the handling from the first pilot and the handling from the second pilot are different. So we kind of had to deal with that. You got and, my next question. Yeah. yeah. And we, I just shot that, and um, and yeah, I, I, I certainly nodded to Dean whilst whilst dealing. Um, you'll see. Yeah, the handling. Uh, that was more of like a practical thing. We just had to make that make sense. <laughs> Why does that look so different? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's, um, you'll see. It's exciting. It made me, when I read it, I was like, okay, that made me excited. <laughs> cool. Look, I'm just stoked, okay? I'm not great at the <laughs> interview stuff. I will be upfront about this. <laughs> I'm just stoked. I'm really stoked about this new show. You know, there's lots of exciting things coming up, but I'm really glad that we're able to talk to you about it. Like, and I'm glad to see your enthusiasm about it as well. Oh, I'm so pumped. I mean, I'm just so, I'm also, I'm really excited to talk to the fans because I know, like, I know I'm as heartbroken as they are of the loss of Dean. And so, like, I just, I just, you know, Let's just try it. Just try it out. Just try it on. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're working for it. The fans are ready for something new, and it, it's very clear that everyone involved is cares so much about this. Everything we've seen in interviews so far, um, yeah, the, the passion that you're showing right now is, seems to be shared by everyone, and that's just uh, that's, that's yeah. going to come through. And it, it came through in episode one, definitely. Um, yeah. We could tell. It's a strong yeah. start. And it'll just get... It just, like I said, the more space we have, the, the calmer the story gets, and the more space we have, the more you'll see it. I, I would be remiss to not ask this because I think our listeners would um, string me up. Um, might there be a, a, a trip to a long defunct Project Quantum Leap somewhere in the deserts of New Mexico as the series goes on? I haven't seen it yet, but we shall see. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other tidbits that uh, we haven't talked about that, that you can maybe drop? And if not, I understand. No. It, <laughs> but it's it. Like, it's, they're, it's, they're, they're layering this story in with so much that I think people are going to be really excited about. Um that does make it a long awaited season six. So um, yeah, give us, give us a good shot. We're, we're doing the, we're doing the best we can to make this like a great quantum leap sequel and not just, you know, a brand new version of some old IP. We understand you, you, you did the pilot in Vancouver. You've got a 12 episode run that you're shooting at the moment and waiting to hear about a further nine. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we drop on Monday and then, you know, our guess is we'll hear in the next month or so. But um, yeah, we'll see. Well, that, what I'm hearing is gar guaranteed 12 episodes of Quantum Leap is what I'm hearing. So that's also what I heard. Yeah. Who, who, who thought well, we'd be here? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. How, it's, can anyone, how can anyone be mad about 12 more episodes there's some people that are just against you know doing anything else how can they be mm. mad you get more you get, you get more, more. <laughs> right like it or don't you get the option yeah. sure <laughs> right <laughs> well um you have been more than generous with your time caitlin is there any aspect of the show or the character of addison that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to discuss that you'd like to expand upon 
I don't think so right now. I think I think we're gonna explore it in the show, and and I'd like to, you know, hopefully talk to you guys again after a few more episodes or after this season, and, and we can yeah. kind of see where we are there because I think that. Oh. Be- yeah, um, that's that you've that's that's our master plan. Uh, we're inviting you back right now okay. after the season yeah. is over, so no we can talk about everything. Yes. No vaccines. <laughs> it will be an extravaganza. <laughs> so. Well, all right. Um, Again, Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us today on the Quantum Leap podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.